Okay, great, thanks. Okay, thank you for being patient today. Um, I wanted to kind of backtrack a minute um, and go back through when is going to be a good time to like use Wolfram or use an online calculator or use your own calculator. So the TI, I know you can kind of program it, you can set up um, simultaneous equations to solve for it, so that's one place that's a good thing to have. If not, Wolfram will do simultaneous equations, so you don't have to do all of the algebra with them. So I wanted to kind of backtrack to um, the steps. So transform into the S domain, and then from there you're going to write your usually node voltage equations, or it may be a voltage loop. And so with that, then you're going to get your set of equations. And so in this case, this would be you know, your set of equations that you're trying to solve. From there, you usually plug in the values and then you manipulate it till you can get it into the form. So to skip the step of all of that manipulation, you can use Wolfram once you have set up those equations. So in this case, this is, um, oh wait, nope, that's not it. Let's see. Okay, so this is um, the set of equations. So solve for um, S usually is looked at as seconds in Wolfram, and um, volts, V is usually volts, so you try not to use those variables. So I usually use different variables for S, usually sometimes Z, um, and then I'll just use another variable, you know, for V instead. And I, it will look at it as an imaginary number. So try not to use those variables if you are going to use Wolfram. But here I just had to type in those, you know, solve for x and L. So x in this case, let's see, what was my x? So L in this case was IL. X is V, the voltage V at the top node. And then I plugged in S was Z. And so this actually gave me the full equation. So this was the equation that had manipulated all that algebra for me. So again, get used to your calculators to solve these simultaneous equations, or if you want to set it up into matrix form, that's another way. These are just a set of equations. So the main goal is getting the set of equations. Use a tool to manipulate all the algebra so you don't make the algebraic errors. And then from here, you would need to factor this bottom though still. So it doesn't give it to you in that factored form. So you want to know like, okay, next step would be to manipulate this to get it to match the table. In order to get it to the table, I need to get a factored form of this. So again, you can use, um, you can use Wolfram to get that factored form. Right, I have another one with that one, I think, let's see. Okay, so here, you can just do factor whatever the polynomial is, and it gives it to you in the factored form. So you can either use the quadratic formula if you're comfortable with that. Sometimes that's even quicker than typing it in. Other times you may see what that factored form is, but if you don't, you can use Wolfram to do it for you. And again, no algebraic errors, which is kind of nice. Um, so get used to using it for those steps, and then once you get the factored form, one other thing to note, I had a person ask a question like this. So notice that 3s squared plus s plus 4 3, if I, or 4 thirds, if I use the quadratic formula on that, which is this one, I end up with a minus 0.5 plus or minus the square root of 39 over 6. And if I multiply that back out, notice that it's s squared plus s plus 4 over 3, which is not the same as 3s squared plus 3s plus 4, right? So this is why I'm saying that you have to factor out the 3 in front in order to get the right constant value in the front. 
So make sure you're doing that and factoring out the three. So this is the same if I factor out a three. So this is um, S plus four over three. So now it's the same as long as I factor out that three in front of it. So when you solve for roots, it's only gonna give you the reduced root value. And so if you have a variable or a, a constant out in front of that S squared, it's gonna be different. So be careful with that. Um, make sure you bring out that three. So in this case, it would be 24 over three. So now my constant on the top becomes eight. So this becomes eight over S squared plus S plus four over three. And then from there, um, the next step after doing that would be to get the partial fraction expansion. So now I wanna match up those factored form to get, in this case, it would just be a B and a, a complex conjugate of B. So I can again do this algebraically, or I can take a little bit of a shortcut and I can type this into Wolfram, and this will give it to me. So it's B in this case is X, and so you see the X over that S plus 1 half plus the square root of 39 over 6J. Let me go back up here. Um, or in this case, B. I did B in this, A, A in this one, and then B in the next one down. Um, so you set that up, you equate them so they're equal to each other, and then that will give you the x value. So x is equal to 8i square root of 3 over 13, and note the 8 square root of 3 over 13 is 3.843, and i is, is um, e to the j90. So I can convert that right over to polar form, and the complex conjugate is the same. This doesn't always give you a nice, easy answer, though. So sometimes you are going to be like, OK, I need to just do this by hand still. So sometimes it will, sometimes it won't um, with the complex ones. But this is an example where it is easier to just do all of those. And then once you get those values, you can use the table to convert that inverse Laplace. Hopefully this makes a little bit more sense of like when do I want to use Wolfram um, or your calculators. So this is another situation where um, wrote the set of equations. So in this case there was three set of equations for the node voltage. This had two. Plugged them all in as far as the equations. And then you can see this is kind of an ugly answer. So W is that answer. So then I'm going to use that to kind of reduce it down. So from there, I got 32.28S by, by bringing out that 1250043 and dividing those two. And then I used Wolfram to factor that S cubed plus 8S squared plus 17S plus 10. So that reduces down to the nicer form of IL. That's easier than probably doing the whole manipulation of all the algebra steps in there. And then um, I could have used Wolfram to solve for these, but these are a little bit simpler, so it's easy enough just to plug in for A, B, and C here. But you could equate it also and get the answers. And it's a good way to check, too, your answers. <laughs> yes? So if we're using Wolfram Alpha, can we just ask it to find the inverse Laplace transform of the expression? No, because she said, mm -hmm. oh, this is not me, she said it won't come in the right form. It won't come in the right form, okay. Yeah. What form are we looking for? <laughs> so, it depends. Some of them will, will do it, and you can use it, you know, you can use it to see, like, oh, does it give me a nice yeah. answer or not? Yeah, and I, mean, I, can, I can check. I'm just asking because um, I know there's other tools besides Wolfram Alpha. Uh-huh. Um, So like if, if 
say like my calculator, I say find the inverse of the plus transform to my calculator. Mm -hmm. It does have it in a convenient form. I can just write my calculator found it, or do I need to show a word for that? Um. You can specify that your calculator did it, um, but it will depend on what the, the question is asking. So, okay. you know, if, if I was asking for what is B here, that's gonna be more difficult yeah. for you to use just a calculator to so get to. Solve this circuit mm -hmm. for this value, that would be, okay. Yeah. If, if, the, if doing the inverse Laplace is like the sole point of the question, that's like it probably wouldn't be allowed, but if it's just a step along the way, then it's more reasonable. Yeah, so it depends on what it's asking. Um, sometimes it's asking for like find V of T at like T equals 0.5. So some of the homework is like that, which you could probably use that to find with the homework. Um, but do make sure you know all the steps because in the exam I might ask for like, what is the value of A in this partial fraction step? Okay. Um, and you can use Wilfram Affle to find that as an example. So here, this is one, um, let's see, okay. So set up the equations, use Wolfram Alpha to solve that set of equations. Um, so it gave me V1 and V2. And then as you can see, V2 was what we were trying to find, but that's again, not the factored form. So then I used quadratic, but you could use the factor of Wolfram. And that gives me this equation. Which is here. Um, into that factored form. So once I have that, then I need to do the partial fraction expansion step. And That partial fraction expansion, if you set it up with A and B, it doesn't give you a very nice answer. So it was easier to solve for A first, which was pretty easy to just put in A. So I just put in the values, you know, multiplied both sides by S and then set S equal to zero. And then I just had the simple equation that gave me 4.4. And then when I set up the B, I just had B and B complex conjugate, so it only had one, one variable there that was unknown. And so that was then came down to a little bit nicer number. On this one, let me pull it down the B. So on this one, um, you can see that B was with a plus, and then the B complex conjugate with, with the minus. And so in the answer that it gives, I have to kind of match these. So the negative is actually B complex conjugate there, and then the plus one is with B. And so I used um, Wolfram again to just take the top portion of this, which was given in rectangular form, to convert it to the polar form. And so from there, it gave me the radius was 6.98, which we used seven, and then theta was 75.11. So you wanna always check your thetas that you get from these calculators may not always be accurate. So you make sure that they're in the right domain, whether it's the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, or fourth quadrant. A positive and positive is gonna be 75 is the correct one. You look confused. How do you know which domain, or which quadrant it should be in? It depends on the values of your, no, I had this in the notes somewhere. So it, we need to know the like, I form. So you need to know like a, the A plus BJ, rectangular form. Yeah. So depending on what value A and B are, if, in this case, um, this one did for the blue, that was, let's see, that was, uh, what was blue? Blue was 
four, minus four, minus six J. Mm -hmm. And so that goes, you can see it should be in the third quadrant there. But if I put that inverse tangent in, that gives me 56.31. And that's not the correct location. So you have to add 180 to get to the third quadrant. For the green one, that was, um, this was uh, minus four plus six J. And so that gave, when you put it into the inverse tangent, that gave a minus 56.31. But that would put you in the fourth quadrant and it's not. It's actually in that second quadrant. So you have to take 180 minus that. Does that make sense? Okay. So do check your rectangular form. Make sure that it is in the right quadrant of wherever you want it before saying like, okay, that's my answer. Um, let me show maybe an example. So this is because I know like the table. I know the table well enough to know like if I have a complex conjugate that's the form I want is in the E to the J something because that I know this one has been used a lot on the table. So you kind of have to know like what am I trying to match up that top, that numerator to. And in this case I knew I was trying to match it up to the EJ theta because we use that one a lot. Okay. All right, any, any questions? Is that helpful? Has this been helpful? Okay. All right, you guys want to try it on an actual problem. <laughs> okay. All right, so 12.32. In this case, um, determine VC of T for T greater than or equal to zero. I'm going to... I'm going to pull up what it would bring up in the inverse Laplace for that one we just did. I think this is the first time we've 
especially some of the diuretics uh, in uh, problems. Mm -hmm. So this is from the last problem, can go here, where this is our answer of 4.4 U of T plus 14 E to the minus 0.77 T cosine 0.56 T plus 75.15. This is what it came up with in the inverse Laplace with Wolfram. <laughs> so not so, not so pretty. So that's an example of where you're going to see, like, oh, that's hard to figure out what that answer is. So why does e c of zero minus not zero, or is it always zero? Um, so the ones we've looked at, most of the time they've been zero because we've used u of t. Is it only when there's a time shift? Um, so like, we haven't looked at the cases where you have a continuous cosine or a continuous sine. Oh where you have to kind of define when is my zero moment. Okay. And in that case, those would be ones that might not have a zero right at okay. zero minus. Okay.
All right, so first first step is to do what with this? Put it in Laplace. Correct, so putting it in Laplace. So in order to do Laplace, um, I'm gonna replace the capacitor with the actual, um, call it and do this at t equals zero minus and so first I have to understand what is going on with this what is this graph look like 10 u of t plus 15 delta t yes Adam. It means zero um, up until t equals zero where it's then going and then after that, it's going to be 10. So what this is doing is modeling a spike in the system. So that 15 delta T is like, oh, I've got a spike. I could put it at 150. I could put it at 1,000. So it just kind of means and models a spike. Here it's actually like, sounds like it was measurable to like, oh, it spikes up 15 more. So this peak would be 10 plus 15 to be 25 amps is actually probably what about the peak level was. But um, so this is kind of what it looks like is it's got a spike at zero and goes up to about 25 and then goes steady state to um, 10. So what are we going to use for the value here for the current source? Okay. So right before all that ha spike happens, it would be zero still. So that would still be zero, which leaves VC of zero minus will be zero. So that makes it easy when I redraw this, I can actually leave out real so there's going to be a source set to zero which kind of just makes it a wire all right i s of i s of s lots of s's in here will be what 
Say that louder. Okay, and then I could combine this to be 10 plus 15 S over S. So I can just make a common denominator in that, that's correct. So that will be my source here. And then this is the value of one over, I think it was point zero zero two S. And then I can solve this circuit, or at least get my set of equations. So. I called that node V, and so I did the summation of these currents, so minus IS plus V over R1 plus V over R2 plus 1 over 0.002S, and that's my equation for node voltage there. And then to get the VC of that, I know the current is this in that branch, so V over R2 plus one over 0.002S. That's my current, and then I can multiply it by one over 0.002S. So Ohm's law of current times resistance will give me that voltage. So those could be my two sets of equations. I plug that into Wolfram at this point. I substituted S was equal to Z, X was my V. Well, let me back up. This was to get um, V. So I used this equation. <laughs> and then once I got V, or no, this was X, sorry. Yeah, V was X. Okay, once I got X, then I use this to solve for the VC. So I use C was the VC, S was Z. And then I just use the X from the previous step. So this then um, solved for my C. So VC ended up being 15S plus 10 over 4S squared plus S. This one was a little nicer where I could just do inverse Laplace. And then this was my answer, which would be 10 U of T minus six uh, two five E to the minus 0.25 T U of T. So that would be my end equation. Um, I could have done the partial fraction here instead. Grab the partial fraction of this. So instead of, I could have just put that into partial fraction form, solve for A and B pretty quickly, and then use the tables for those, which, oh. Oh, sorry. Um, just A over S plus A is A to the E minus AT, and then U of T goes to one over S. So the A goes to just 10 U of T, and then the minus 25, wait a minute, minus 25 over four, and then E to the minus 0.25. Okay, questions? Did you guys follow those steps? Okay, homework this week is more of these problems.
quiz will be one of these problems. So get comfortable with whatever calculator you want to use so that you're also ready for the exam. All right, see you guys.